thank you again, Davey. And cool. uh, see okay. you at the end so, of the here goes. I hope this all works as planned. I hate sharing screens. This is the most difficult thing in technology. Uh, so hello, everyone. I have the chat open. So do put like, you know, comments and stuff in the chat and, and like emojis. And that will kind of like make me feel like I'm not just standing here talking to a computer screen. So let's go. Uh, we're talking about going static in a dynamic world with Hasora and Nuxt. So who am I? I'm Debbie O'Brien. I am just as of today, head developer advocate at Bit. So it's bit.dev. You should check it out. It's really, really cool. And before that, I was um, a former dev advocate at Nuxt, which you probably all know me from that. A teacher at ViewSchool, um, a Google developer expert, a Microsoft most valuable professional, a GitHub star, a media developer expert. And uh, yeah, and I'm still a Nuxt ambassador, so I'm still going to be doing lots of Nuxt stuff. So don't worry about that. And you can follow me, um, Debbie O'Brien on LinkedIn or Debs underscore O'Brien on Twitter. OK, let's get started. So what I'm going to cover. So first of all, Nuxt, of course, I hope you all know about Nuxt. Uh, how static sites work. Hasora and GraphQL, love Hasora. Build hooks and triggers with Netlify deployment. And Nuxt.js full static. So just a little few things, right? <laughs> I know, I know, it's kind of like a lot. It's like, you're going to give me all that in like just half an hour. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. This is all just going to be thrown at you. So Nuxt. Nuxt is the intuitive view framework. If you don't know what Nuxt is, um, basically just go straight away and start learning Nuxt. Nuxt is going to make your life easier if you're using Vue uh, because it does a lot of the stuff for you. So it's really, really, really cool. Like the benefits of Nuxt, for example, you get file-based routing. So what does that mean? That means you put a page, like a page component into the pages folder and you get the router.js file created automatically for you, complete with code splitting, complete with magic comments, everything. It's all done for you. So. That's kind of like what makes um, what makes Nuxt super cool. So yeah, you don't even have to do anything for code splitting. It just does it. Whereas, you know, in your view one, you would have to get your router file and you would have to import and all that kind of stuff. We do it all for you. We also do prefetching. What prefetching is, is it goes ahead and kind of like see, say you have like a menu and have like links to other pages. It's going to prefetch them so that they're ready when the user clicks, it's going to be like instant because it's already pre prefetched. And obviously, if you're on a 2G network, it's not going to prefetch it. So if you're not having much Wi-Fi, then it's you know it's good. But yeah, this is super super uh, performant. Automatic component imports. Now this is really cool. This was released about six months ago. Not everyone knows about it. But you know the way you like normally put import header from header component whatever, and then you put component header. Well, we don't need to do, do that anymore. It just automatically. Uh, searches the component folder for you and it imports it for you. And it doesn't import everything, like there's tree shaking and there's all that kind of stuff, Webpack, so it's only importing what's actually being used. It's like a crawler that crawls it. So it's a really cool feature. And there's more than 145 modules. Um, we have a new website as well, modules.nuxjs.org, and they're all there. And it's like you can just see everything. And we have so many modules and keep, people keep making more and more and more. So the community is impressive. What else does Nuxt do? Progressive web apps. This is so cool, right? I don't know if you've ever built a progressive web app, but it's like, it's kind of hard work. Well, it kind of is. Um, and you, with Nuxt, you don't have to deal with any of that. You basically just have to, like if you're using create Nuxt app, just choose progressive web app, or you can just install the module. And then there's like very little steps you have to do. For example, like add an icon, uh, put it in the static folder. It has to be 512 pixels by 512. And then Nux is going to like create all those um, icons for you in the different sizes that it's required for the progressive web app. And this is done all for you. The service work is created, everything done. It's going to make your website much more performant and better offline support. Server-side rendering. So if you want to do server-side rendering with Nux, you can. And it's very simple to do. Now, I'm a static uh, fan. I prefer static sites. But there are times when you need server-side rendering. The great thing about Nux is that you don't have to like choose at the time of like, you know, say setting up your application, because you can go, right, I need static sites. And then later on go, oh, I actually need server side rendering. You just change one line in your config and that's it. And that's kind of really powerful. So yeah, static site generation is my favorite because then we can host for free on things like Netlify and I like free. Free is good. So uh, static sites um, we can do as well. Now you're kind of looking and going, yeah, but static sites are so boring, right? Like, do you remember the static sites of the 90s? This is like one of the most iconic uh, websites of all time from 1996. This is Space Jam website. It's still live on air today. You can actually just go there and everything still works. It's really, really, really cool. So that's not what we're building today, but the static sites in the 90s were really cool. And you know what? Actually, this is um this is how they built it, right? This is their notes and this is what they were going to add in there. Graphical links as sponsors, the games, a lot of fun stuff, the solar system, you know, how it's all going to work. 
And then this is like their, their site map, I guess you could say, right? So here you got the site map of everything. And if you look in there, it's actually not that static, really. I mean, there's a lot of like dynamic stuff going on there, even though it's a static site, right? Because there's games and stuff. There's um, there's like a photo, there's trailer, there's video clips, there's animated character sketches. Now it's really hard to figure out things. It's uh, the UI is terrible, but if you start playing around with it, you'll actually have a lot of fun in there. There's even a quiz. I keep losing on the quiz, but yeah, it's a static site. So maybe static sites in the nineties were not so bad after all. This is what a, a quote I love from the Rolling Stone magazine, even today with its basic HTML pre broadband file sizes and flash free architecture. The site is easy to navigate even on a mobile phone. The movie clips encoded in QuickTime are somewhat grainy, but still viewable. Nothing was designed to still work after 19 years. It was simply designed to work. Now this was printed a couple of years before that. So it's almost like 20 something years, right? Now that's kind of incredible. So when you're building your website, you're never thinking about, oh, this is gonna last for 20 years, right? But yet it does. So static sites have like, yeah, it's just cool. And this is it if you, if you wanna like dive in further. I absolutely just love this. And one of the things that like, this is frames. Have you ever watched it frames? Oh my God, back in the day, these are what we used to do, you know? Uh, and it might be really ugly, but it's just still so cool. You have to just like understand the coolness of this. Um, and one thing I love is unfortunately, this only works in a Macintosh running Netscape. Sorry, Windows users, right? So like the browser Netscape, any of you who don't know what Netscape is, sorry, but that's like a browser before like Internet Explorer, like, and it was worse than that. So um, yeah, the browser's dead and the website still lives on. That's cool. And there's the trivia quiz that I keep failing at. So if someone can win this quiz for me, just, you know, go ahead and do that. <laughs> and even like their 404 page, I mean, it's cool, right? No idea how you got here, but you discovered an empty page. Uh, again, cool site, really worth checking out. So let's talk about Lighthouse 6. What's Lighthouse 6? That's like the lighthouse to check out the boats. No, no, no. Lighthouse 6, and actually, I really should change this slide because Lighthouse 7 is out this month, I think. Um, it's out in Canary Chrome. I'm not sure if actually and on the other um, Chrome, but Lighthouse 7 is actually out. So, but the big, the big change um, in Lighthouse 7, it's not that massive a change, but the change from Lighthouse 5 to Lighthouse 6 was significant, right? Because we changed first content full paint um, has been 20%. It's now taking up less uh, space. You got speed index is now reduced to 15. And look at this, like first meaningful paint before was seven, but now we've got the largest contentful paint, that's 25%. That's the that's like critical to your website, right? The first time it paints that site, that page, if you've got a massive video, for example, you know, you're gonna have problems. Um, time to interactive has been reduced, right? Because people wanna see content. They're not actually caring about being able to click. They wanna be able to see and read content straight away. And that's what the emphasis has been on it. And total blocking time, yes, it's not blocking. So you can see like, um, there's a massive change in the lighthouse tests and Space Jam is still scoring 100, right? So it's gone from year after year after year, true lighthouse scores and without even making any adjustments, scoring 100. And that's how we should be building websites today. Performant websites, uh, static sites. Um, yeah, kudos to these guys, these built it and uh, absolutely brilliant. It's really, really cool to, to see that, you know, the people behind it. And there's actually, um, there's a Twitter bot checking to make sure that that site doesn't go offline because it was taken offline about um, five years after uh, after the website and someone in the company was like no you cannot take that site offline and they kept they kept it back up there so it's still up there and it'll live up there forever because it's just so ionic iconic so 90 static is very static I know okay yeah there's like you know all the text is in there everything all the data is in there and it's just all yeah okay Michael I get you, I get you, it is, it is a little bit static, but you know, we went and changed everything to server-side rendering, right? Because we wanted all this dynamicness and that's what we did. We wanted to share code between pages. So, you know, we wanted to get data from a database and we wanted to have like populate the page on the server. We wanted to serve the rendered HTML to the client and that gave us, you know, good search engine optimization. So this was the solution, server-side rendering for the win, but you got to call the server on every page. So you're literally calling the server. You go to the next page, you're calling the server. Go to the next page, calling the server. You know, that's a lot of calls. And you got those page flickers. Like, I don't know if you have gone to like the old websites um, where you're changing the page and it's like flickering, right? Because it's like re-rendering that whole page. And that's old server-side rendering issues, right? You need a server. That's money. I don't like money. I don't like spending money. So, you know, I don't want to pay for things. You need a server with server-side rendering. And it does cost money. 
And it isn't as performant as a static site. It's still more performant than like single page applications, but it's not as performant as a static site. And front end code, front and back end code is mixed together, right? Now we're not talking about Nook server side rendering, we're talking about server side rendering of PHP, .NET, et cetera, back in the day when we used to do all that kind of things. And yet all our code is mixed together, not cool. Client side rendering, Michael. Okay, yeah, that, that, that's, that's what they come up with next. That is exactly what they come up with next. They said, let's just do it all the client, then we don't need the server, right? Then, okay, let's cool. Let's, let's build single page applications. So single page applications were the savior to all our problems. We can share components across pages e easily. Uh, front end code is now separate, you know? We're just like, you know, calling the, the APIs. This is brilliant. Faster navigation, because it's like just a single page. So you're not really navigating, you're just updating the DOM. This is cool. No page flickers, yes, no page flickers, love it. It's client-side rendering. Everything's just being rendered in the client, okay? No server. But the initial page load is quite slow because what's happening here is you're actually asking for the whole JavaScript that's needed for your application to be loaded in the browser. It gets downloaded and that has to get rendered everything at first, right? Once that's rendered, then it's like super fast. But the initial page load is quite slow and that means it's not as performant and we want to create performant websites so that's kind of a little bit of a, a negative when it comes to single page applications and you know you've just got this simple html page if you've ever like you know uh inspected a single page application inspect the code you'll see like nothing there's nothing there right it's just a, a div a head tag a div and you know nothing else until it gets rendered by the javascript so yeah the rend renders the page on the client side after the javascript loads so it's not great for search engine optimization. So try selling a single page application to the marketing department. They're just gonna go, not listening, don't like JavaScript frameworks, and you know, you're just gonna fight with them. Yeah, it's not great for performance. You really think static is the future? Yes, Michael, I really do. I really think it. Like I know it, like seriously, like, you know, I, yeah, I know we're going back in time and stuff, but static sites are the future. I promise you, Michael. Let me show you. So static sites are back because you got free hosting, which is cheaper, like free is cheaper, right? <laughs> of course. Um, so yeah, you can host for free. You get a pre-rendered page, right? Everything is already rendered. We don't have to go to a server. We don't have to do it on the client side. It's already there. It's just like, bang, done. There's no server needed, which is safer. What I mean by safer? Well, you know, all those hacking of servers. Remember those WordPress websites where, you know, you're just being hacked all the time. Well, we don't have that problem with static sites because, you know, it's already rendered. Nothing's actually coming in there to to do anything, right? So it's a lot safer. And we've got excellent search engine optimization because everything is already rendered, right? And excellent performance. I mean, you cannot beat the performance of something that's already created compared to something that has to start being created. And it's greener. Yes, it reduces the carbon footprint. And this is really important because we've seen how, you know, this whole pandemia thing, closing the world down. And I mean, the beaches in Mallorca, this year, like last year, were amazingly, amazingly clean, the sea, everything. So yes, reducing the carbon footprint has a massive effect. So being greener will also help. So greener, the IT sector already consumes an estimated 7% of global electricity. Did you know that? 7%? Like, that's just incredible. And you can do like a test of your page and you can see like, you know, I tested this page um, out that was a server set rendered page and it's like dirtier than 70% of web pages tested. Like there's a lot of like, you know, CO2 being produced just for that one website. Nine trees is what it takes for that web page. Um, the carbon for that nine trees to absorb in a year, right? So that's just one website. So like, think about all those trees. Seriously, it's crazy. Uh, Space Jam, Space Jam of the 90s. This web page is cleaner than 95% of web page pages tested. How cool. I mean, they're doing it right all this time. That's why it stays up online. <laughs> um, so seriously, be greener. But yes, performance also matters. And performance is, is one of the main things that we have to think about nowadays. Now, I, I this is, um yeah, this is one of the Next Ambassadors website and uh, he's working on, and he's a great guy. He's done a great job, but he can't get it as performant as he wants to, even though it's Nuxt, because it's server-side rendering. And server-side rendering is very, gonna be quite hard to get that performance up there. I mean, Nuxt, look at us, 99. I mean, I don't know why it's 99. I'm sure it, it should be 100, right? But I think it's a font issue or something. I need to get to the bottom of it. But basically, yes, look at the difference, right? 99, 100, it's all the same, come on. Um, and you got first contact of a pink, 0.6 seconds, like uh, Google says under three seconds. 
uh, after after three seconds, like you've lost the person and we're at not 0 0.6. And that, that's cool, right? We've got a video on the page and the first content of the paint. So that's pretty impressive, right? What about content? Okay, here we go, right? Well, you've got to generate your site. So use the Nux Generate. Um, and what happens is that the build is cached, right? So we cache the build and then we only have to generate the content. So if you're just changing content from an API, for example, we just regenerate that content. We don't have to rebuild that whole thing with Webpack. That's kind of really cool. That makes it super fast. So now generating your site is actually not rebuilding your whole website, but just generating, making your, your content. So that's, that's cool. So Nux full static, uh, you don't have to expose your API to the public. So basically like, you know, everything is kind of like stored in, in payload files and you're not actually making those calls um, to the server or to the API in real time because it's all just there, right? So that means you decide when to publish new content from your API just by regenerating your website. Cool. Full static is much faster. API calls can have latency, so it always takes a little bit longer. And the payload files, this is where, you know, um, all the API details are going to be stored in these payload files. They're cached, which is like much better for offline support and PWA module. So just make a call. Full static. You just put target static in your application and then just next generate. That's it. Simple, easy. Talk over. See you later. <laughs> no money lesson. Um, so let us let us have a look at how that works, right? So we've got our code and we've got GitHub and we basically want to deploy it to Netlify, right? So you want to like just deploy Netlify. Um, we're going to call next generate. And basically what that's going to do is generate our static HTML and it's going to give us that page there and there on, you know, live from Netlify, deployed, for, deployed on Netlify. Simple as that. That's how it all works. What about data? Michael, seriously, you're going to go down that road. You really want me to work on data. You don't want me to just have all the content just, just in there. Oh my God. Oh, these people, they just never, they just want to always figure out a way to make my life difficult, don't they? Okay, okay, I've got you, Michael, I've got you, data. So I have a website, right, where I put all my conferences. And um, yeah, this is basically where I fill out kind of things and it's all data, it's database. So it's like, I wanna have my data somewhere. I don't wanna have this in like, you know, just in my file. So yeah, I guess I need kind of a database for my data. So I'm gonna use Hasura. Now Hasura, I love Hasura, if you've ever, um, if you ever used Hasura before, yeah, it's cool. If you haven't used it, do check it out. It's really, really cool. It's an open source engine that connects to your database and microservices and auto generates a production ready GraphQL back backend for you. And it's really cool because like, I'm not a backend developer and I can build APIs, GraphQL, and like it's, you can have it hosted on Heroku for you. So you don't even have to worry about all that stuff. Really cool. Let's have a look at Hasura. So Hasura, you get this, right? So you get like, um, this is your like your, your UI, right? And as you can see here, anyone that's ever worked with kind of databases or PHP my admin back in the day, oh my God, do you remember? Uh, this is a lot nicer. <laughs> so you can like add a new table, you can put your table name in there, put the columns in there, the column type, right? So, you know, um, text or whatever. Uh, the default value, you can have a unique ID, you can put primary keys in there. So it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory, right? Pretty straightforward. And you can see I've got two tables over there. I've got the conference table and I've got the workshop table. So now what it gives you is a GraphQL endpoint. If you've never worked at GraphQL before, I'm sure you have, because GraphQL, likes, like everyone's working on GraphQL now, right? But you get one endpoint, right? Not like with REST where you get an endpoint for every single thing. And it's like, oh my God, endpoints everywhere. So this is one endpoint, which is really nice for front-end developers to work with. So this is my endpoint. This is what I copy and paste and put into my application, into my Nuxtop, so that I can connect to my uh, conferences table. Now you also get a GraphQL playground with Hasura. So this is really cool because you actually get checkboxes, which means you don't even have to know how to write GraphQL queries. So if you've never worked a GraphQL before, don't worry, you probably know how to check boxes, so you'll be all right. So you can see here, okay, I, I'm showing you the workshops one, but you know, conferences, workshops, same thing. Um, and I've clicked like alt and date and duration and ID and image and name and place and title and topic, check those. This is like gonna give me the query. So I didn't have to write this, just by checking those, I get the query. And then I can press that play button. And once I press that play button, bang, I've got my data, right? And I can see that that's the data I want. That's cool. If I'm missing anything, I just check another box. If I'm, you know, uncheck it if there's too much. And then that's the query. I literally just copy and paste that query and put it into my next, next application. Like that's super powerful. That's just cool. Hasura rules. So yeah, Hasura and Nux. How do I get that in there? How am I going to go and get my Hasura into my Nux application? 
So you need to install and register the H HTTP module. So we can install next HTTP because we want to like, you know, make that call. You could use Axios as well if you want. I'm using HTTP. Um, so then you have to register the module because in Nuxt, we don't automatically include that module. So you've got to like go into your Nuxt config and say modules. I want to use that module, right? Now I'm going to create a plugin. I love creating plugins, right? Now you could use Apollo, but Apollo is a massive library. And like, I'm just like getting data. I don't want to add a big, massive library that I don't need to use. So I'm going to just simplify things and create a plugin. Woo, that was a lot, wasn't it? Oh my God, what happened there? Okay, so what's happening here is just my plugin. So I'm in a in the plugin file and I'm basically saying export the default function. I'm going to use that HTTP module that I just um, installed and the config, right? And then I'm just going to inject. And I'm going to say Hasura, just like, you know, create me and prefix it with the config and the API Hasura URL, and then just inject Hasura. And then I'm just binding the Hasura, right? So this is, yeah, I, if you don't understand it, then don't worry too much about it. But that, that's all you need to do to create a plugin to basically like, you know, make that call to the API. Like, that's cool. So bear with me, bear with me. You got to register the plugin. Now, this is... um. This is something you have to do right now. You're not going to have to do this in Nux3, by the way. This is just going to be automatic from Nux3. But for now, you have to go into the plugins in the Nux config and add that plugin, that file that we just created. You've just got to add it in here so Nux knows it exists. Now we've got to import GraphQL from GraphQL tag, or GQL, I should say, and import print from GraphQL language printer. There are the two things I need in order to get this to work. And then I've just got to add my query, right? Simple. My query was already given to me in my GraphQL. Playground. Now I've made it a little bit um, smaller here just because like, you know, the slides and stuff. But yes, basically what we got from that playground, copy, paste and put it in here. And you can add in extra things like order by date. And if you don't understand how to do all this kind of stuff, you can actually just check the boxes and it will even do the ordering and stuff for you. So it's really, really, really cool. Async data. So we use async data to get our, our data. Um, you could use the fetch hook, but I'm using async data in this um, because I want to get that data before the page renders, right? So, so I'm using async data, I'm passing in app, and I'm basically just saying data await app, my Hasura, which is the plugin I created, which is basically just going to go and, you know, call that API. And then um, query, print my query, return conferences, data.conferences. That's it. That's my call to my async data to, to get it. So then I just need to use it in my template and just like you would do anything with view, like a V4, conference and conferences, and just conference.name, conference. you know, whatever else of the information that you need. That's it, simple as that. I know you're kind of like mind blown, right? It's gone in one ear, it's gone out the other. And you're like, Debbie, what have you just shown me? That's too much, I can't take this. Boom. I'm gonna check and see, is it in there? Is it in your ear? Um, yeah, it's kind of a lot to take in, but it's really simple, right? So how does it work exactly? So remember our code is in GitHub, we, you know, git push and we deploy to Netlify and Netlify uh, has that command registered in there that says, you know, in, in, in the package JSON, whatever, Nux generate. So we want to generate our application. Now it's going to fetch the API. It's going to go to Hasura and it's going to go, give me that data. Hasura is going to return that data, give it back to the Nux application. And then it's going to generate the static HTML and then it's going to be bang, there you go in the browser. Right, so all that's going on under the hood. Simple, kind of really cool, right? But that's it, that's all done. So when you get to the browser, that API call has been made. It doesn't make another call. It doesn't, you change the page, it doesn't go and make that API call again. That API call is done all like beforehand in the pre-generating of the site, right? What about data changing? Michael, seriously, oh, you just always wanna make things difficult for me. I'm just like, doing a really good talk here and you're just like barging in here and asking for new things. Oh, seriously. <sighs> okay, I got you, Michael, I got you. We can generate on update. So we can actually create an event trigger. And this is really easy to do in Hasura. So you just click on the events tab in the Hasura UI. Cool. And then you just like create a trigger name. So like trigger name could be like conference, update, conference, update, workshop, whatever. Choose the table I want. And this case is going to be the conference table. Trigger options, what do I want to do? I want to update. Yeah, I don't want to be inserting or deleting, <laughs> uh, but you might do. And then you need to put the webhook URL. What's a webhook URL? So the webhook URL is what you're going to you know, get back. Let me show you that. You go to Netlify. Now I'm using Netlify. You could be using something else, but I just, I'm a big fan of Netlify because it's just beautiful and easy to use. So I'm using Netlify, but you can get these hooks from other 
uh, providers as well. So in here, you get the build hux. Uh, you can give it a name. So uh, update my website, whatever you call it, whatever you want. And then which branch? And you press save. And then it goes and gives you this, right? So this is my, my build hook. Um, this like URL is what I need to copy. Now don't go copying that and trying to mess up my conferences because that doesn't work. I already just like edited that one. That's a dummy one. <laughs> so yeah, copy that in. And then basically you're just going to drop it into what I showed you earlier in Hasura, the webhook URL. You literally just have to, that's how you connect Netlify to Hasura, right? So you've got that Netlify one, you put it in there and bang, that's it. That's like so cool. So, okay, there's like, you know, a couple of things. Um, what you can do, browse, modify, delete. We've got our tables here. As you can see, this is like really, really easy to browse, to modify and, and delete stuff. So we're in, we're in our Hasura app and we wanna modify um, some content because, you know, something's changed um, or we've got a new, a new one to add, et cetera. So in here, we can modify things. And then what's gonna happen? So I'm gonna press save in Hasura. Maybe I've added a new conference talk, for example. Um, press save. Hasura is gonna go to Netlify and it's gonna say, Netlify, go and deploy again because there's like new cool stuff here. And Netlify is gonna go call the next generate and it's gonna go, okay. And it's gonna go, Hasura, give me that data. And Hasura is gonna go, here you go. Here's all that new cool data for you. And uh, yeah, skipping Webpack as only the content change. This is the cool thing, right? Because uh, it just changed the payload folders. It didn't change like the content. It didn't change view files. It didn't change CSS files or anything. So Webpack's like, I've got nothing to do here. This is all you guys. So just skips Webpack and it just generates super fast. Love that. Um, Bugs Bunny loves it too. <laughs> so yeah, basically uh, the static HTML is created and you, your website is fine. They're done. And all that was just done through Hasura by adding that webhook. That's kind of cool, right? You've got to like admit it. That's kind of cool. I can see in the chat. Nobody's saying that's cool. That's cool. So yeah, next for static, you're going to call the payload on every single page change. Uh, there's a crawler for dynamic pages. What does that mean? You don't have to um, use the generate function to generate your roots. So if you have like, you know, dynamic pages, say blog posts, all those blog posts, you don't know what they're called because maybe that's coming from an API. Um, once there's a link to it, then Nux will crawl it. Now, if it's a secret page, imagine you have an admin page, for example, you're gonna have to generate that because there's no link to that admin page, right? But every other page, it's just crawled by Nux. Once you're using the Nux link, don't like start using A tags and hope that Nux is gonna know that you want it to be crawled, right? Nux link, Nux link. Um, live preview, what? what does that mean? Live preview is really, really cool. You can have a live preview of your data, which means you can actually go to Hasura, change that data. Imagine you didn't wanna use the web hooks and you didn't wanna have it like deployed. Um, or you were just like, want to see it really fast, then you can actually just live preview it before it's actually deployed. That's kind of cool. And the build is cached. So like I said, you know, it skips Webpack because the build is cached. So it's only like modifying and changing those payload files. So it only generates on content change with webhooks. Like this is just cool. What about dynamic content? Oh, seriously, Michael? Michael! Michael's making my life difficult. Okay, so what about dynamic content? You kind of just want like a hybrid. That's what you're kind of saying, isn't it? It's like, you want to have like, you know, static site generation and server side rendering mixed together. And you want to have like both, right? Because you don't want to have to like regenerate that. Maybe you have some, I don't know, some kind of thing going on where there's constant data changing, right? So you're like, I can't really work with a static site because one page or two pages are really need server side rendering. I know, I get you. That's what we call like, and I'm putting this term here, SSG plus SSO. We're like, we're mixing them together. We're calling it a hybrid, right? So that's what we wanna do. We could also call it like stale while, while revalidating, for example. Um, we wanna return the data from the cache. We wanna send the fetch request and revalidate it. And it render the page with up-to-date data. Now this is actually, was it released three days ago, four days ago? So we were in the last conference um, in Amsterdam you would have probably heard about Nitro, the new engine. So this is Nitro. This is actually going to do all this for you. And you're going to be able to basically server-side render some pages on Netlify. How does that work? On GitHub pages. What? I know. Seriously so cool. Using serverless functions, et cetera. And Nux has done all the work for you. So this is this is new. This is like so new. It's like so cool. Um, and this is uh, this is coming out. The You can actually just test out the package right now. You want to play around with it and stuff. Um, 
but this will be in Nux three, and this uh, this is going to be like the engine. So this is how things are going to work. This is the future. This is so cool. Nux serverless, um, like it's just amazing. Call it Nux Nitro is what it's actually named, but that's yeah, it's just it's just so good. It's too good to be true. And literally, you can just say this page I want static, and this page I want server side rendered. <sighs> Love it. So yes, um, static site on static hosting, serverless functions, you can server render dynamic pages. Welcome to the future of static sites. Isn't that amazing? Static, dynamic, static, dynamic, dynamic. Basically, you just say, you're gonna be static, you're gonna be dynamic, you're gonna be static, you're gonna be dynamic, and you're gonna be dynamic. And that, that's what you do, it's like so cool. Uh, Next serverless, um, basically it's gonna work. Now, I actually wrote this slides and they kind of mo modified a couple of versions. So this could be not exactly, Correct, but more or less, this is what you have to do, right? Um, in serverless, I think it's called Nitro now. Um, and then you just put static and there the pages you want to be static and the rest is server rendered on a static hosting, on Netlify, on GitHub pages, etc. So that's kind of really cool. Welcome to the future, Michael. Are you happy? Are you happy with this? Because this is like, like the, I can do no more. This is, this has to be it. Yes, Michael's happy. Yes, yes, I did it. Oh, I mean, Michael, he's, he's in a hard one to impress, right? So uh, yeah, why static? So remember, with static, um, there's no server, so it's cheaper and safer. You have better offline support. You got better performance. It reduces the carbon footprint. We're gonna be greener, everybody. We need to be greener. We really need to be greener. I want my beaches in Mallorca to be like beautiful and that clear blue um, sea. I need that, right? So yes, let's reduce that carbon footprint. And dynamic content with um, uh, stale water revalidation, right? So that's uh, hybrid mode. It's just cool. Think static, think static, but be dynamic. I think that's what I want to get the point I want to get across here. You can be think static, but you can be as dynamic as you want. Thanks to Nuxt and the new Nitro serverless uh, framework. Are you Nuxt? I really hope you are. I really hope I've convinced you to all just go home. And I'm going to say go home and you're all sitting there. I'm already at home. I know, but it just sounds good, right? So go home and then just start building Nuxt applications today. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, that's me. And yeah, uh, check out my YouTube channel for more stuff about Nux. Uh, keep following Nux as well because all these updates are coming out like literally every month from now on. It's going to be crazy what's being released. Uh, so do check that out. And yeah, if you have any questions, I am here and available for any of those questions. I hope that you were able to take that all in. I hope it wasn't too much. Oh, and don't forget Space Jam, Space Jam, the new legacy. I think they, they said it was coming out this year and I don't know the whole pandemic. It's kind of like Rune thing, but Space Jam 2 is coming out. And I would love to see that like the Space Jam, Jam 2 website being built as a static site with Nuxt. Wouldn't that be amazing? I would love that. That would be so cool. Who knows? And that's it. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so people, we can start to ask your questions. There is already some uh, some question um, in the chat. People are, are saying thanks. It's not um, so. Why? Uh, okay, everything is not not working. From okay. I just covered it all. Um, so did you have the name of? Uh, <laughs> Other server where we can easily build uh, the, the next site like Netlify. So you talked about the uh, GitHub pages and um, did you have some other resources to, to share us or not? Yeah, I think. Or I'm did you only use uh, Netlify? Did I only use Netlify for the serverless part, right? Yeah, so this is, this mm. is something that's very, very new. I don't know if this is even public but I'm just going to share it. Oh, if you can access this, it's public. If you can't access this, then it's because I have special powers. Um, but this is uh, basically the, um, this is the Nitro package that they talked about. And there is a demo. Yes. And the demo should have been made. Yes, here's the demo. So this is, this is the demo that you can go to and you can test it out. Uh, there you go. Um, and this is like, you can see how it works, the dynamic, the static, the API, and there's Versal, Netlify, Cloudflare, GitHub Pages, Azure Functions, and Azure uh, Static Web Apps. So that's what we've worked with um, to get that working. So this is, um, at the moment, it's a module, and you can install it and play around with it, but it will be part of 
Nux3. It will be like it's the engine of Nux3. It's password protected, right? Can you see the um, can you see the demo? The demo should have been made public because they they made it public for um, Nux Jess Amsterdam conference or the view the Nux conference, the view conference. Um, so you should be able to see the demo at least. But yeah, this is going to be released any day soon. So kind of just like keep watching for it, I guess, if if it's not live. The demo works. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, they're going to release it very soon. Keep keep an eye out for that. But it is going to be part of Next 3. And they might put it into Next 2 on a different versions. So that might happen as well. So again, watch out for that because the team are working nonstop on things like this. But it's very cool. It's very cool. Mm -hmm. Um, what uh, do we have to do uh, about configuration to use uh, uh, the PW, PWA? Should we have uh, what can we configure for uh, for the PWA? The the routes? Uh, what can we? Yeah, do? so the PWA is all. It kind of does everything for you in the sense of um, like you can use it and create Nook stuff, or you can just add it as a module later if you've already got an application built, and you've got to add your um, your icon. Uh, but the service worker is created for you. Um, everything's created for you, but you can go in and you can modify things. So you can go into the um, into the Nux config and you can add con your own configuration if you want to. Now, I don't, I, 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 the only thing I configured was the, the theme color because I wanted this like green theme color um, for the like the status bar at the top. Other than that, I didn't like configure anything else. And that's um, actually, I'll, I'll share this link and you can kind of uh, see, this is where we have all our modules. And uh, you can see, you can see here like where there's 163 now. Wow, it keeps growing. It's like it's crazily insane. Um, and you can like just search in here for PWA, and you can see how that works. And um, yeah, it's a really really cool site because you can find everything. There's actually something I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you um, that's really cool because I spoke about it at UDS Amsterdam. So if you did not hear my talk last week, then this is really really cool, and you should check this out. This is like going to be released any day yesterday. So hopefully in the next like two or three days, but you can still use it and play around with it. There just might be minor changes because we're working with the Chrome dev, to, to, um, dev team on this. Um, so Adi Osami, for example, and uh, making sure it's as performant as possible. So there might be a minor change to it, but pretty much it works and it's great. Um, and it's definitely worth checking out. That's Nuxt image. So you're going to have like, you know, Cloudinary like feel to your images. You can like add WebPs and AVIP and, and change sizes and stuff like that and still use providers like Cloudinary. So that's another thing that you should check out, which is really cool. Thank you. Um, is this an all or nothing approach or is it possible to, um, I think this question is very linked to what you present to S, uh, what is what is your is you use the new term that you are using? S, yeah, uh, it's nitro for it's SSR nitro. and and static site generation SSG. Yes, uh, they called it. So they the called it nitro. Was, is this or nothing? And uh, I, I just finished the question, but uh, is this is this uh, an or or nothing approach or only partial per part of the application while other parts are still uh, like uh, a standard uh, SP, SPA. Um, so this is, this is, so what, what I was talking about was static sites with server side rendering. If you want single page application, uh, you can still do that by just using the um, exclude property. So you can just like today go in and build a static site mm -hmm. and you can exclude pages and they will be, they will automatically fall back to single page application. So just use the exclude property for, for that, then you get client side mm -hmm. rendering, right? Um, so that's all that that's been possible like since forever. We do the whole seat again, or just the page where where update happen, where the update happens. Um, when uh, I, I think the question is uh, linked to the. Uh, and uh, the, the web books uh, okay, and what, is asking what, what, if uh, if uh, if the if the hooks uh, generate the whole page or just a part of the page. 
Yeah, no, so, so the hook basically calls the generate function. So it's going to generate the whole website. But because Nuxt is like very clever and knows that you only change the API content, it doesn't regenerate all the website because it doesn't need to. Um, it will only generate like the payload files. But that's like working under the hood. You don't have to do anything. That's just like, it just figures it out for you. Mm, okay. Um, how can we help you to control? Yeah, so uh, contributors are always welcome and like this, you know, think about what you want to do, how you can help us. Could be documentation, uh, could be translations, it could be creating a module. Maybe you've already built something that's really cool. You want to share it, that's contributing. It could be taking issues on, on like the websites, on the modules and kind of answering questions and fixing things. And there's, yeah, so much, um, so much stuff you can help out with. So always contributors are always welcome. And did you have a, a guide of contribution? Do we have a what, sorry? A, a guide. A guide. Um, yeah. Um, yes. There's a kind of like a page on GitHub if you go to the repo, but just kind of explains it. But we don't have a very big kind of like massive explaining bit by bit guide. I mean, it's, it's yeah, it's just jump in. Just jump in and someone will help you out. You'll never break anything, so don't worry. And someone will always, like we have a whole team behind it that's basically making sure that you know everyone gets helped. Anyone who's first time contributing, um, we won't let you break the internet. Don't worry. <laughs> I was always afraid. I was first contributing um, to um, to Webpack, and I thought I was going to break everyone's Webpack website by by contributing. Like seriously, it's it's, it's a very big real fear I had. <laughs> There, there is a community, so community with uh, <laughs> will will do the, the review process. Okay. Um, will will looks like a picture or not? Uh, so will looks uh, something. Uh, is will looks uh, a Netlify? Yeah, so we so Bill talks with Vercel or other services. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm using Netlify, but this works with uh, all of them. They all they all can have Bill talks. So yeah, I I just haven't deployed with um with many of the others, but they, it's all the same. You just I just don't know where the U, in the UI it is. You just got to find it, but it it's possible. Yes. Okay. 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 Uh, is anyone the other question or not? Otherwise, I'll just dance. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nux is just amazing. You'll have to check that built. It's, yeah, it's really, really cool feature of Netlify. And okay. like, you know, it's, it's very easy to, to use. So mm. do check it out. Highly recommend it. And how do you uh, and you try this? What is your this decision tree um, when you, you start a website to say uh, to think about uh, um, should we use this approach or should, should we stay in a, in a old SPA uh, approach? Did you have uh, something that to share with us about uh, what? Uh, yeah, so that's a great question. And I don't, I think like, I mean, if you're building a single page application, so client side, that's something like an internal tools, like an admin panel, something that's, that you, that you don't really care about SEO and performance. Uh, you just want a client side that works perfect, right? But in general, I think we're kind of moving away from SPAs because of the performance issues that SPAs cause, right? So we're moving towards static site generation um, or server side rendering if it's needed. So I would choose the um, the server side rendered option, right? Which then you don't build client side rendering applications, and then you can choose um, static, right? If you choose the target of static, that's if you think about it. Where am I going to deploy my application? Am I going to deploy it on Netlify, um, on any static hosting? Then you want static. Are you going to deploy it on a Node.js hosting? So it could be like on some sort of Azure or something or whatever. Then you know you can choose um, server. Yeah. But at the time, you can choose static. 
And later on, maybe you're building it for a client and then you don't know uh, what your target is. You don't know where they're going to host it. No problem. Build it with static. And then when you get that application finished and they go to deploy it, they say, oh, we're hosting it on Nginx on node server. Like, no problem. Just give me two seconds. Change the command. Target, server, bang, done, sorted. Next is easy. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, in, indeed. It seems, uh, it seems very easy. And uh, I really like the approach. Mm -hmm. uh, so, attendees, is it okay for you? It seems. Um, you can you can check out. By the way, you you can check out like Have any of the, the code that I've written. Yeah, I was just gonna say any of the code I've written is actually open source. So if you wanted to see. Like I don't have the serverless thing working on my website because it's not launched yet. So that's the only thing that's not, but you can actually see, um, like, I'm just going to put my, the link to my website in here and you can get the GitHub link from it. Just search down and click on the GitHub um, icon at the bottom and you can go to my GitHub site and you can actually just take all my website and take all my code and, and like, you know, you can take that Hasura plugin that I created and you can just like create it yourself and yeah, you can copy everything. It's open source. There's loads of mistakes in there. So like, you know, don't judge. <laughs> but um, but yeah, you can play around with it as much as possible and have fun. Um, someone asked uh, to, to share uh, the, the resources you use to for Azura uh, for uh, the, the best example or two tutorials that you, uh, you recommend. Yeah, for what I just talked about. So um, basically, I would go to my site and click on GitHub. Um, I'm probably I'll, I'll just click it. It's easier. Um, it's just because I never can find. There we go. So this is um, the secret recipes of a chef. I know. There you go. The French love their cooking. So there you go. Um, <laughs> so that's the GitHub of my website. So you can actually just see all the code. And you can go in there. And you can go into the plugins folder. And if you go in the plugins folder, you will see hasura.js and you'll see that that's the plugin. And you can just copy that plugin. And obviously, you're going to have to change your um, API, right, from the in the Nux config file that's, that's coming from dollar $.config. You change your endpoint to not be my endpoint. But if you want to, like, go to my endpoint and take everything, you can also do that, too. That's cool. <laughs> um, everything's, everything's open source there. So yeah, play around with that. And um, if you want to learn more about Nuxt, I highly recommend the the course I created, not just because I created it, but um, because it's free and I like free stuff. I think free is very important. Um, and that's on the Netlify Jamstack app. And that will actually teach you as well about how to deploy to Netlify um, and stuff. So, oh, wow, that was quick. Thanks. <laughs> so yeah, that's, um, I recommend that one. It wasn't your, oh, that's your, a your code. article. You oh, that's a blog post. There you go. There you no, go. There you go. Not, that's it's it's something else. That's the. That's the. Yeah, yeah. I, I wrote. I wrote. I did write a blog post about. It. I forget what I've written. Um, <laughs> so that that's a free course if you want to get started with Nooks if you've never yeah. worked with Nooks and stuff. I highly recommend that. And then also just follow me on on YouTube. I'm going to go live. I'm doing a live stream uh, tomorrow with Prismic. So that's different to Hasura. So maybe Hasura, you're kind of like. I'm not convinced. Well, I'm going to be showing Prismic on Tuesday and I'm showing Storyblock on Friday. So just check out my YouTube channel, follow me, subscribe, whatever, and, and uh, just come along and watch how, other, how others do it. And it's, yeah, it'd be fun. Debbie, everywhere, anytime. I know, right? It's like getting, it's getting a bit too much these days. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> Uh, if if everything is okay for uh, for everyone, I think we will uh, we will stop now. Uh, we just stay five minutes again in uh, in network mode. That uh, to, uh, the last question. And uh, bah, thank you again. Thank you again, David. Uh, it was thank very you. interesting. <laughs> and uh, I, I really think that I should I will uh, look at next. Yes. Yes. I've notified you. Yes, that was my mission. <laughs> I can go home happy now. I mean, I'm already at home, but you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 Thank you for your comments, guys, and your questions. Really appreciate it. Thank you, everyone.